Hello and welcome to Littleton Live. I'm your host, Nicole Biagioni. The objective of this program is to have discussions about topics that affect us here in Littleton. We welcome your calls each week and look forward to having a meaningful dialogue with you about specific topics that we will discuss. Tonight, our topic is related to the issue of retail marijuana establishments coming to Littleton. We want to hear your opinions on this topic. Do you think it's a good thing for our town, or do you think it will create more harm than good? If you would like to be a part of this discussion, give us a call at 978-540-2487. If you call and are put on the air, please turn down your TV set because there's a slight delay in what you're seeing in the direct line in to the studio. So the phone lines are open. And while we wait for our first call, let's go over the timeline of events that led to this discussion tonight. So starting November 8th, 2016, if anyone can remember, the state of Massachusetts voted to legalize marijuana. From there, Littleton voted to legalize marijuana with 3,233 votes saying yes and 2,713 votes saying no. That is like 500 votes. It's like such a tiny margin. So at that point, we officially became, well, unofficially became a yes community, which that means we are okay with having retail marijuana in Littleton, but we haven't like officially declared it. So then going from um, November 8th to May 1st, that was when our first special well, town meeting. So the town of Littleton motioned for a moratorium on Article 18 to do research on the subject and establish zoning areas. This was voted and passed by a two-thirds majority. This was more so put in as a procedural safeguard more than anything. And then afterwards, October 30th, next town meeting, uh, a moratorium was extended with an amended section just extending it to do more research and zoning. So then we get to May 7th, 2018. This is the big one. <laughs> article 20 was passed by a two-thirds vote and this article contains everything with terms and definitions and everything so anybody can understand what's going on. It also has uh, rules and regulations for the applicants, what they must follow, and there's also zoning regulations. So this was the meeting where Littleton officially became a yes uh, community. So we officially said we want marijuana establishments to be in town. So within this article, there's zoning areas and if you look up the warrant on uh, Littleton, littletonma.org, um, it will show you sections of town and from there it'll there's like one section and then another section one's by the common the other one's by sandville and cherry stone so those are the two sections and it's labeled marijuana retail districts so those are what um those are where people can have establishments so from there people are kind of wondering where was the establishments like how many can we have so I did a little research and also in the warrant, um, Article 20, there's Massachusetts General Law G, 94G, Section 3, where it shows you how the number of um, establishments is determined. So there's, um, how it's determined is there are, you take the number of carry out alcohol establishments. So we had seven in 2018. And then you multiply that by 20%, going back to high school math, um, and that equals the number of establishments that can preside in town. So since we had seven, you multiply that by 20% and you get 1.4. And so I remember from high school that if it's below five, you have to round down. But at town meeting, um, the citizens there voted to round up to have a total of two. Um, this also, the state only has a maximum of two, so we chose to have the maximum. And then from there, jump to October 29th of 2018. Um, Article 4 establishes that we can have a 3% um, tax revenue um, for retail marijuana dispensaries. So I guess that gives you a timeline of everything, of where we started and where we ended. So you kind of have like a bit of 
understanding of how things are. Um, it didn't pop out of nowhere. It's been happening for the past two, almost three years. Um, so uh, with that being said, I've displayed the facts. Um, if you'd like to call in and voice your opinion, the number is 978-540-2487. I'm looking forward to having a discussion with anybody watching. Um, I'm excited to talk about this subject. I've done my research. Um, and it's, I mean, it's been a hot topic for, I don't know, I got home from college in May and my mother told me, oh, yeah, there's two dispensaries coming to town. I'm like, wait, what do you mean there's two dispensaries coming to town? So I guess it's, so it's just kind of interesting. Um, I mean, there's just, there's also been a bunch of rumors floating around, and I, I feel like you have to clarify them. One of them being the citizen's petition with, um, there's a bunch of signatures going on. Um, I mean, if you watched uh, the Board of Selectmen meeting that happened almost two weeks ago, there was a number of signatures, and the exact number is 246, that were collected over the course of three days. Three days, that's incredible. Just to show, first off, the amount of, um, outreach that the community can like put out based off the amount based off the time limit so um, I guess the question is is this a formal petition because we had that special town meeting about should outside groups have say more say than park and rec and whatnot so it's not um, according to state law if a per, if a formal petition is put in the town needs to act within 45 days for a special town meeting this was not that instead it was an informal citizens petition just to get the attention of the selectmen being hey this is what's going on we didn't know this was happening even though it was discussed five times we we need to we need to talk about this so this will be discussed in October, in the October town meeting. So if you would like to discuss this, you are, I suggest you should use your constituency and go and use it. Just, be, just say, you know, I wasn't really for this. So I guess what's next? It's, it's a slippery slope because since it was an informal town meet, informal petition, there, you can't stop the process so we have it's a three-step process so in this three-step process you it's process you have the selectmen then you have the um, board of uh, the planning board and then finally you have the CCC or the cannabis um, commission uh, commission control so you go through this three-step process. So first the selectmen must approve, then the planning board must approve, then the CCC must approve for this uh, dispensary to exist. So next week, July 15th, that's a Monday, um, the selectmen could decide to give one license, two license, or no licenses. So after that, um, you, you can't stop the process midway. You can't you can't s stop accepting applications and then be like, oh, we need to stop and reevaluate. Like, you have to go through the motions and figure out. You just, you can't stop a moving train, if you know what I mean. Um, so after, after this, the planning board will talk about traffic and go from there. Um, and then the CCC will dismantle the application once that passes. And it's also if it passes. So an interesting thing, um, is if after town meeting in October we vote no um, to having marijuana, say one of the dispensaries like passes through, we can't just kick them out. I mean, they're they're officially now a business. So a dispensary or dispensaries can exist in the town of Littleton but we could still be in no community. So, I mean, that's kind of paradoxical in a way, but yeah, if you know what I mean, like we said no, but we have a dispensary and it's just like you can't revoke their license once it's been approved. So I feel that um, next, just like who are the players in this? Cause I mean, like I said before, I came home from college and there was two applicants and I thought there were zero. So there's, three applicants applying for two licenses in Littleton. 
So one of them is going to King Street, and the other two are going to 160 Air Road. So the King Street location is right behind Il Forno. It's kind of, it's between Il Forno and that computer shop slash yellow building. It's right back there. So that's where um, one group is going. And then the other two are applying for um, a spot at 160 Air Road, which is right by um, Cherry Stone Furniture. It's in that lot. It's right across from uh, Sandville and whatnot. So the three people who, applicants who applied for um, the licenses is the Community Care Group, Littleton Apothecary, and then the Herb Company. And then also, this was something interesting, I thought, but there's one testing lab. So this is a quality control lab that is, they're going to just test the quality of the product, I guess, and just make sure there's nothing tainted in it, whether it could be animal tranquilizers, because I know that was a big thing that happened years ago, or anything bad in the product. So they're just testing the quality of it. So that's also going in 160 Air Road. So the, the interesting thing with this is you can't have two dispensaries in the same location. So um, Littleton Apothecary and the Herb Company are vying for one location, and then the testing lab is also, since they're not a dispensary, they're also looking to put their spot in 160 Air Road. So I guess, so I mean, that's, it's just all interesting stuff, and um, with everything that's come through and it's once you've done like the research and whatnot it's I mean I feel I don't know about you but I feel enlightened be like okay this happened over a duration of time it wasn't it wasn't like it miracled overnight and it was so I mean it didn't like everything didn't come out of nowhere um, so how I found a bunch of information was going to littletonma.com. So when you search up littletonma.com, this is what you'll find. It's lovely. It's beautiful. So where would you find the town warrants, per se, for um, any of the uh, select of the town meetings? So you would go to How Do I and then go under the town meeting tab. So here we have lovely, all the town meetings from 2007. Oh my goodness gracious. Um, and so since this started in um, May 1st, this is when we first voted for the moratorium. Um, we'll click on this one. And if it will scroll. Um, Let's see, it might not be this one. I don't think it's this one. Yeah, this might be this. Oh, I clicked on the special town meeting. That's why I couldn't find it. <laughs> you know, you learn with technology. Um, so the town warrants, if I'm being completely honest, are huge. So what I typically do is search mar marijuana, and it should pop. Up. So this is the one from May 7th, 2018, and this is the big one where we voted to um, have establishments in town. So if you can see, everything is searched and highlighted and whatnot. So you can, you can read through and just, I mean, I've read through it and it's been a little lengthy. Oh, we got our first caller. Um, so let me answer this. Hello, can I ask who's calling? Uh, yes, this is Sean. Hi, Sean. How are you? I am good. How are you doing? I'm pretty good. Thank you for calling in. So I guess um, let me first just start off with what's your opinion on the establishments coming to town? Um, I'm not really for it. Okay. And can you just, like, elaborate on why you're not for it? I know that's like, that's, uh, many people aren't for it, but can you explain why you're not? Well, I guess I'm against the legalization of marijuana, even though, um, 
I was in the minority on that one, so that would be the first thing. Um, okay. The second thing, I just, um, you know, the town is so small, and, you know, do we really need this kind of traffic, um, you know, and this kind of uh, disturbance? Um, I, there's one in uh, Hudson, uh, Massachusetts, that's on a fairly busy road, and every time when you go it's right off of uh, exit 26, off of 495, and when you go by this, I'm, I'm not, the store is like right on the main road, and they've got three cop cars in the middle of the road. Um, no one's really directing traffic, and all of a sudden it goes from two lanes to one lane, and it's oh, a God. real bottleneck, and it just seems like a, a major um, disturbance. And I noticed a couple of the ones that you're describing right describing are on main roads, so that would be, uh, there's no real place in Littleton just to kind of put it on that, you know, out of the way, you know, it's going to be on a main road, so I'd hate to see all the traffic, you know, yeah. bottle up. I completely know what you mean. I mean, like, Littleton is just a small town. It's one lane. King Street, even though it's pretty wide, it's still small, and it, whether, like, 495 is redirecting traffic off it, the, or... I don't know, when IBM gets out, it, the town kind of just turns into a hot mess, and you don't know how to process the traffic. It's just, it's, like I said, a mess. And so it's, I mean, it's going to be interesting based off the locations, how the traffic is going to work, if you know what I mean. Because there's that one going by King Street. That's, that's a mess. But, I mean, the one out towards air, like, that's in a more rural location, to say the least. But still, it's... It's a little, yeah, I know what you mean. The traffic is going to yeah. be interesting on how Littleton's going to process it. And, and any of your research, um, have you come across the mandatory, is it mandatory to have a police officer on site um, during business hours? So, so I was trying to figure out the one in Hudson has two police officers when they're open. Um, I was just trying to figure out why that was. Yeah, so, I mean, from... The presentations I've seen, the establishments have offered up security to, like, eliminate loitering and whatnot, and they were willing to hire details to um, deal with the traffic and whatnot, but it's not specific. From what I've seen, it's not specific that there's, um, that we have to have police officers dealing with traffic. I don't know if the town would have um, like um put out details to help with the traffic flow but it's it hasn't been specific yeah because that would be my other you know concern yeah you know, if we have to put police detail down there you know our police department stretched at least that's what they say and you know to have added you know yeah detail. i completely understand and it's just be, you know and who would pay for it would it be you know the town yeah. paying for this as a safety mat matter for the town, or would it be the business paying for it? Because um, it's like kind of that's what people are drawn to, but are we paying for that because we voted for it? Like how I feel it's just a new subject that we don't, there's so many um, like question marks or questions that we still have and we don't know, and I don't know, it's just kind of a big yeah. gray area. Yeah. So what's the rush for this? Like, what, you know, it, you know, I was going through what you were talking about, the town selectmen. Yeah. That it goes to them, and they can, if I understood your presentation, it said it could be one license, two licenses, or zero licenses. So, I understood it correctly. Yeah, so are you talking about how quickly the process moves, or if... Yeah, like, like a... July 15th that you mentioned, could the Board of Selectmen say we're not going to issue any licenses at this point? Yeah, so or July that... 15th is like the final, this is, this is when they're approving or denying um, applicants. So this, that's the final date. So, um, oh, I see. yeah, that's the final date. So there's three applicants essentially going for two, 
two licenses. Yeah, there's three correct? applicants going for two licenses, and the select the board of selectmen could say yes or no. It just it depends on their vote, and they're all. I've heard that some of them are watching their shows, so. Uh, um, so it's just up to um, what they choose. So. Yeah, and I agree with you on the rounding. One point four doesn't round to two. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much for calling in. Much appreciated. Okay. All right. Bye. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. I hear that we have another caller coming in. This is exciting. Hi, Christine. How are you? I'm fine. Thank you. That's good. Um, I mean, you're one of the applicants in town. So um, what's... I guess, what's your take on this? Well, I first wanted to answer the question that I heard from Sean about the police details. Yeah. <clears throat> so there's no requirement by the state or the town to have a police detail there. Okay. But the, um, each applicant agrees to pay up to 3% of their gross revenue. Yeah. So that's before taxes to the town as a community impact fee. In return, the town has to basically bill the establishment for the, uh, you know, for whatever the impact is. So if okay. the town, so if, if, you know, if Chief Pernard wants to have, um, you know, details out at a shop, the shop would pay for that. Okay. Yeah. That, Thank I mean, you for clarifying that. that. I'm very happy. <laughs> I guess a question for you is um, the Littleton project. I feel that's really unique to your application <laughs> because from all the other applicants, some of them have offered scholarships or helping out in town. But this is, I have to say, I'm very interested in this. Could you ex explain and elaborate on it? I would love to. The, uh, the Littleton project is the entire reason for my proposal. They, um, I tried at first and looked into the legalities of opening my shop as a nonprofit so that I could give all of the money to Littleton, and that's not legal. Yeah. <laughs> re retail shops of any kind are basically, I mean, like a nonprofit organization could open a retail shop of some kind, like you know, the Salvation Army shops and things like that. But really, the, a typical business person cannot operate a shop as a nonprofit. Yeah. So the Littleton Project is a foundation, a nonprofit foundation, that will receive the profits from Littleton Apothecary and will give grants to people, Littleton residents, based on their project's ability to positively impact the citizens of Littleton. Okay. So they'll be, it, it'll be governed by a board of directors of Littleton residents who will develop the bylaws and develop the grant process and award the grants, vote on the grants. Um, and those grants are for people and businesses and Nonprofit organizations or anyone in Littleton who has a project that will do good in Littleton. Okay. I think that's, I feel like it's giving back to Littleton and like expanding growth and business. So you're, even though like you're taking in, I mean, I'm trying to, um, even though like business is going well, you're still trying to give back to the community and have a positive impact of, from this. It's the, there is a ton of money in the Massachusetts cannabis industry. Yeah. The cannabis industry is projected to reach, to be worth $1.8 billion in the next couple of years. Oh, my goodness if gracious. Fully built, uh, fully licensed out, the entire state would have 581 cannabis shops. So if you divide $1.8 billion by 581 <laughs> retail shops, that is a ton of money. For me, I have lived in Littleton for 20 years. Shortly after I moved to town, 
I was a young mother a couple of years. Uh, I'd lived here a couple of years, and our house burned to the ground, and we lost every single thing that we had ever owned. Oh, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> and I was a stranger. I yeah. didn't know anyone in town. And the people of Littleton, who I'd never met, they gave me, I mean, they gave us so much. They gave us furniture, and my two-year-old son had clothes. I didn't buy him clothes until he was six Yeah. because of the donations that came to us from people I'd never met in Littleton. I mean, household things, clothes, money, diapers, yeah. toys, everything. And I promised that I would spend the rest of my life giving back to Littleton, and that is the reason for Littleton Apothecary and the Littleton Project. I know that I have what it takes to run a shop like this. Okay. But the motivation behind it is is the not is the nonprofit. It's the foundation. This is a way to take all of that money and put it to work in this town. All of it. So it's your so. way to give back. I I feel there's gonna be people who are gonna push back and be like, You're taking advantage of a drug essentially and using it for um for this program so what how would you respond to those people who say that you're taking advantage sure. of I, that? I would say that that is absolutely true and that's that there if there will be two retail shops in littleton and there will be eventually yeah wouldn't you like to have one of them or both of them? Yeah, exactly. Take advantage of this enormous financial, you know, opportunity. And it's the money's not for some corporation. You know, I'm the sole proprietor and sole owner of this shop. I can, you know, like I am taking advantage of this financial opportunity not to enrich myself but to improve Littleton. And that's, you know, so people could certainly say I am taking advantage of this, and it's because I am. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I thank you for clarifying some of the questions. I mean, some of the... Um, Detail. Yeah, things. thank I you. I have read... Massachusetts 935 CRM 500 a million times. <laughs> Probably forward and back. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, I thank you so much for your time. Um, I just, I don't know, I just thank you because I feel that there's some applicants who just, I mean, from Board of Selectmen, they've, they didn't really clarify anything. Or I feel just they're outsiders or whatnot. So I just, I thank you for just clarifying and also being want, wanting to give back to Littleton. Oh, you're welcome. And I'm an open book. I'm happy to receive and answer any question anytime from you or from anyone. All righty. Thank you so much for calling in. You're welcome. All righty. So, um, now we're going to kind of shift to, uh, I went out to town meeting about two weeks ago, almost two weeks ago, and got some citizen feedback of what people were thinking um, going into town meeting. I mean, we talked about marijuana at town meeting, but this was completely independent and completely separate. So take a look at these few clips and we'll come back in a bit. I'm going to be asking a few questions about the marijuana dispensaries. Just first and foremost, are you for or against them? Uh, I think it's a great uh, opportunity for the town with taxes and ability to make money off of it, so I'm for it. Yeah, I'm also for it. I think that they could definitely have a, a purpose in town. I, I, uh, I think that there's no reason that marijuana shouldn't be legalized because there isn't any evidence that it's any worse for you than alcohol. There's not that there is evidence that it's not bad for you. I'm actually for it myself, personally. And why is that? I've just seen the help that it can do to people, and I've seen um, how the other dispensaries in Massachusetts have actually created and run their businesses, and it's honestly very, very uh, impressive. You don't really know what's going on. It's very calm. It's very quiet, which is nice. You don't expect that. And the security around it is exactly what you would want to have something like that in your town. Uh, I would say against. And why is that? 
You know, I think it's it's really just um, anything that could potentially be a stepping stone to, to worse situations, I think is just something that personally I just want to avoid. And, and dispensaries are something that, that definitely could lead to other problems and other issues. And uh, just the, the risk of that happening, as low as it might be in some people's opinion, it just, to me, why? Well, I am not for the retail marijuana in town. Um, I don't think it's a good idea for Littleton. I don't think we have the infrastructure for it. I think it'll be a traffic nightmare. And the revenue that we can get from it, I don't think will we'll make it worth our, our benefit of having that much more exposure to marijuana in town. Um, you know, if we start selling it, there'll just be more around. Um, there'll be more people using it. There's no way for the police to check. Um, there's no reliable test for people to see if they are under the influence of marijuana. And I just don't think it's a good idea for our small town, especially to have two retail locations um, with only 9,000 people. Uh, I'm against them. I'm really concerned. Uh, I've heard that they lead to increased crime in the, uh, in the neighborhoods. The store itself tends to have really high security, but vandalism and property crime goes up in the neighborhoods nearby. And I'm just concerned about you know, sending our kids the message that in school we tell you don't do drugs, but hey, we don't mind having a marijuana shop or two or three in town. That just, yeah. yeah. And that's just not the, that's not the reason I moved to Littleton. Um, my next question is, do you see any downsides to having the dispensaries in town? Uh, uh, that's a tough question. <laughs> um, yeah, I can see downsides to it. I can see the same kind. It's very hard to regulate. And just like with alcohol, people buy alcohol for, for minors people buy the jewel for minors, people are going to buy pot for minors. Or, or they're going to, at least it's a possibility, and that could be a, that could be a downside. Uh, yeah, yeah I, I think that could be a downside. But, you know, I haven't really put a whole lot of thought into that, actually, honestly. Yeah, I'm sure there could be a couple, just more people smoking. A lot of people aren't, don't like that just because it has been. Um, looked down on for so many years, but not too, overall I think it's positive. I know a few people have complained about like the smell and stuff, so uh, I mean that could be a downside, but I don't think it'd be a big problem. First off is going to be the traffic, the amount of people coming. Um, we saw what happened in Leicester, we saw what happened in Spencer, the amount of people, it was astounding. Um, that's going to be the, I think the biggest detriment is the traffic. Um, I don't think there's any going to be any negatives for kids and loitering that a lot of parents and a lot of people have brought up only because I don't I don't see the correlation between the two um, if there are younger kids that are smoking they're not bragging about it they're not out everywhere they're home into themselves um, but I think traffic is going to be the biggest detriment to everything I guess if I look at it there's I don't see much upside potential I see downside potential uh, and maybe that downside won't happen but you know why would I be for something that I don't see any upside and even a five percent chance of a downside so my last question is, do you think the town should be involved with this? Well, I think they kind of have to be because they're the gateway for whether these shops are allowed in our community or not. Um, we need our town leaders to, to make decisions about what's best for our town. Yes, absolutely, um, because this is actually a very big deal. Um, it's not legalized federally yet, so to have something like this in Littleton, it's kind of like... The, the flagship, well not really the few in mass, but considering the type of town Littleton is, this isn't something you'd expect at all. And I don't think that the retail marijuana um, is something that we should be involved in. I don't think we're really set up for that. It'll be a traffic nightmare, it'll be, um, it'll just be a mess. Not worth, I don't think it'll be worth our headache. Alrighty, well those were a few voices, but I want to hear from you. Give us a call at 978-540-2487. I'd love to hear what you'd have to say. I mean, we had some, from that video, we had some for and against, and it's, it's a mixed collection. I just want to hear, I just want to hear from you and see what you think. Um, so I guess we can answer a few generic questions per se. So I guess one of them that 
I've thought of or whatnot would be um, what um, the air si the 160 Air Road location. That's if you think about that on the map of Littleton, just think about it. It's kind of close to the high school, right? So. I thought so too, and I was like, okay, well, that's kind of close. What is there a law or something about that? Well, turns out there is. Um, if you look, um, if you go to littletonma.org and go to how do I, and then you go to town meeting, and you go back to that um, May 7th, 2018 document, and you can control F marijuana and search it. It's going to pop up with this and scroll down a bit till you find the exact location. It's going to be in zoning, if I can find it. <laughs> um, here's the law I was talking about earlier, the Mass General Law 94G. That's got a bunch of the definitions, it's clarifying and whatnot. Um, there's also another general law where um, it talks about uh, the tax revenue that the town can choose to select, and there's a maximum of 3%, in which the town has chosen to. Um, so, um, if you're looking for anything that I pulled up, this is specifically the uh, Mass General Law Legislature website. So, if you whether you look up the law or if you Google um, or like in your search bar go malegislature.gov and then search for the certain piece of legislature, it should pop up. But back to the question, um, if I can find it, it talks about where, where can you have this specifically. And, you know, if I can't find it, I might as well, if I can get out of this. Um, right around, yeah, special requirements. Here we go. So no marijuana sh establishment should be located 500 feet within any um, lot containing a school, licensed child care facility, public park, playground, athletic field, or public recreation or land facility. So if you imagine the map of Littleton, uh, where that is, it kind of like, it's close to Cooper Field if you kind of think about it. So, I've, I mean, of course they measured it out and it's a little more than 500 feet, but that gives you a bit of reference to be like, okay, so I guess the high school is like a little out of reach, but it's still like relatively close. So th this section just has a bunch of zoning requirements and special permits and whatnot that you can look up on Littleton ma.org under how do I and then town meeting and search that up. So I guess another common question we can answer is, I don't know, how are we going to deal with the traffic? And like Sean said earlier, it's how are we going to deal with that? I mean we have the traffic details and whatnot, but Littleton's kind of small. So, I mean, if you'd like to call in and discuss traffic or if you'd like to discuss about the petition or anything I've brought up about laws or whatnot, call us at 978-540-2487 because I'd love to talk about this. It's such a hot button issue in town and everybody is all riled up and I'm like, okay, um, let's have a discussion about this. So, um... So I feel, um, oh wait, I think I got an email. Um, it's about the petition actually. So Steve asks, how many signatures did the petition get? And does this petition mean we're going to town meeting? I said a little early ago, the signatures, there was 246 signatures in total collected within a three day period, which is incredible and shows that this is a big deal and it's an attention getter. Um, so. I guess what does this mean? Because I feel that town meeting, um, in a way, kind of, special town meeting is a little uh, sour topic in town from last town meeting and how signatures were collected. So this was, I, 
I don't know how they were collected, but they were collected and brought into town, uh, the town clerk's office. And then afterwards, it was discussed that it's going to be an informal town meeting, an informal petition. So that means there's not going to be a special town meeting. It's not going to cost the town, a, the taxpayers, a boatload of money. It'll just be at the normal town meeting. And it'll be on the agenda for what wants to be discussed and um, debated in town. So that's that's kind of where everything is I, I'm sure we'll have an update when we get closer to town meeting but yeah that's kind of where the petition at is at and I feel that what's interesting in town um, is that we want to I feel like we need to get more involved in our own government and whatnot um, so I mean, if you want to be more involved in government, in Littleton government, I suggest first off that you go to the July 15th meeting where uh, the Board of Selectmen will be meeting and approving or um, approving licenses for certain applicants uh, for the two licenses. So if you want to get involved and voice your opinion, that's where you should go. I mean, constituency and voting and whatnot is such a big topic nowadays. It, this is, I guess, your time to go and voice your opinion. And then after that, you can go voice your opinion at town meeting. It's, you should use your voice and use your vote to um, express what you want from the town. And Because, I mean, the people we vote for in office, they work for you. So um, vote and whatnot. Um, so if you have a question or a comment, um, call in at 978-540-2487, whether it's about the Selectman meeting or if it's about a marijuana or if it's about um, the applicants or the testing lab, uh, just give me a call. I'm more than happy to have a civil discourse with you. Um, Yeah, so I mean, more than welcome to talk. Uh, I mean, it's, I've, is, is, I'm trying to look. Let me check my email again. Maybe, is there, oh, here's one. So, um, are there any positive, dispen uh, positive things to come of the dispensaries? That was from Thomas. Um, I mean, earlier from, uh, from, Christine, who called in, there's the Littleton project, which she's giving back to Littleton after what, after that tragic house fire. So, I mean, that's her way of giving back. Yes, she's using the drug to her advantage, to, but she's giving back to Littleton. So I say that would be a positive thing. Another one would be, I mean, the tax revenue. There's, I mean, that's going to be a bunch of, 3% seems like a small number, but but the rate of which people are coming in and spending, mar spending money on marijuana. And then on top of that, I mean, there's also from last week's Selectman meet, not last week, but last Selectman meeting, there was a, one of the presenters said there was a shortage of marijuana or legal marijuana in the state, which that's going to drive prices up even further. So, I mean, there's going to be a bunch of money coming in, but that's kind of, I mean, personally, that's what I see are positive outcomes and what I can think of. But if you have a positive, something positive, negative to say about the marijuana dispensaries, give me a call on 978-540-2487. Love to hear from you. Let me check my email one more time. Oh, we have a call. All right. Hi, Lori. How you doing? Good. Nicole, I have a question for you. How are these establishments, once they get approved, going to make sure that people under the age of 21 don't have access to the stores? That's a great question. So a bunch of applicants have proposed security. From watching the Board of Selectmen meeting, they've proposed security inside and outside. They've also thought of uh, having ID scanners, so they'd take your ID, scan it, and then someone would check it. I think that that's how the main way, but I see like a flaw with that because I'm 19. I can see that, I mean, I know people who have fake IDs for alcohol. They used to get alcohol, cigarettes, 
Jewel and Jewel Pods and whatnot. So, I mean, they can just as easily use their fake ID uh, to scan in and get the marijuana if, like, if it scans. Because I know some of them are made and they're not as great of a scanner. Or if they, or if the dispensary has a scanner that's, I mean, specifically made for the shop and it's better than most bouncers or bars or liquor stores. If they're better than that, then maybe they'll deter more under 21 people from coming in but it still doesn't stop like 21 year olds or over that to go and buy and then sell it to 20 21 and under for a much higher price so it's i mean it's a double-edged sword if you think about it like yes they have these precautions but people are still going to find a way to get it if you know what i mean of course of course the other the other question though too is or the other comment i'd make is are any of these um sites where the applicants are looking at, do they have a certain number of parking spaces or parking lots affiliated with them so that it will diminish any traffic issues that may arise or are they required to have a certain number of parking spots? Yeah, so facility? it's based off the square footage and how many people they estimate are going to come in. So for example, um, 160 Air Road, it's that certain lot has, and like that sublet has about 10 spaces, but the herb company has made an agreement with Jack from Cherry Stone to have an additional 10 to 12, so that gives them a 22, which is the spaces they need. So it, it depends on what location and how big it is. So, but at that specific location, they need a, like a minimum of 22, which, they're, it, which they've come up with. I just see that there's a problem with like, what if there's more than 22? Like if you work in a restaurant, you're gonna have rushes someday that are more than you can handle than some days you're like quiet. So I'm just wondering like if they're gonna be rushing if there if there's a big rush and people need to park, are they gonna be parking in the street? Are they gonna par be parking in other parking lots that aren't specifically for the dispensary if you know what I mean. So I, I think parking parking's just gonna be a big issue along with traffic. Oh, of course it is. And they're both on both of these locations are on main roads too as exactly. you said before. One's on Air Road, one's on King Street and it's Especially the one in King Street, it's right near the intersection by 495. Exactly. So it, it's going to create so much of a problem with people getting in and out of IBM, getting in and out of CVS. Yeah. Or just even going to like any anything on that road. It's just it's just going to be interesting. So I think you. Have they also set? Have they also set hours? So, um, specifically with um, the herb company, they said they'd be from 11 a.m. to 7 p.m., so they're not open from 1 p.m. to 1 a.m. So, I mean, that's like, it's past morning rush hour, and it's past late night getting out of work rush hour. So, I mean, and it's Littleton. Like, if there's something, if there's an accident for 95, there could be something else going wrong. So... I mean, it's going to, it's, I don't know how it's going to be. I have another caller on the line. Thank you so much, Lori, for calling in. No worries. You're doing a great job. Thank you. <laughs> All righty. The next call, um, Carrie is on the line. Hi, Carrie. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm very good. Thank you. Good. Um, I was calling. I just wanted a, a point of clarification. I know um, earlier there was some discussion about being the town being able to collect um, up to 3% to cover um, like our incidental costs, like if we had to hire a police detail. Yeah. And I just wanted to clarify that we can, the town can only collect that 3% for up to five years. Okay. And that's per section 3D, excuse me, 3D of chapter 94G. Okay. For so, because um, some people think that, oh, you know, it'll be fine. 
we'll be able to pay for the traffic and yeah. the detail and all that. And we will for a little while. but Yeah, exactly. But after five years, how long is that going to hold the town over for and how much will we have to be paying in the aftermath? Exactly, because we can only charge for our actual costs. We can't, we can't charge more than we would have to pay out. That would, that's not allowed. Yeah. So we can certainly recoup our costs for, for any incidental um, community fear. I forget exactly what, the, what it's called, but um, only for a very small amount of time. And the, the traffic isn't going to, isn't going to stop. Yeah, um, as another person mentioned, going by Hudson, um, there's always uh, a cop detail out there. Exactly. So, I mean, it's, I, it's just when people are going to get sick and tired of, one, the traffic, and two, how long, how long will the tax revenue last us? Right. And yeah. the, the common, I mean, that, the traffic in there is, is, already, yeah. is already a mess. Um, and the shops are open for, you know, 10 hours a day, of yeah. course. Um, but people aren't going to be there evenly over the 10 hours that they're open. There's, you know points of time that are um, much more highly, um, they'll get a lot more people in. They were saying, you know, 30, pe 30 customers an hour, but that's not coming out 30 people evenly over 10 hours. That's exactly. going to be all like after five when everybody's on the road. Exactly. And it might be, it might be over 30, might be like, say if like 60 people came in and where are they going to park? It's where are they going to park? Where are they going to go? Two ways is, is, um, is one lane. Yeah. And that's all ginormous work truck, you know, ginormous 18-wheeler truck. Exactly. And there's a little tiny, little tiny, um, where the, the cars would pull in, little private drive there that they have to pull in. And I can envision that being backed up and big 18-wheelers coming up, screeching yeah. to a behind stop traffic. Exactly. I mean, it's just, there's no good place to have the, even though we have those districts it, there's just no good place to have them because there's always i mean the tractor trailers coming down 2a are scary and it's just i don't know there's nothing good with and people coming off of 495 will be taking a left onto 2a and they'll be having to drive by the high school and i'm sure you probably remember trying to take a left out of that high school oh my um, goodness gracious it's that a was, nightmare that's it's awful i mean I've heard that they're going to put a stoplight there, and that'll help me getting out taking a left, but it's still, it's, it's just, mm -hmm. it's, it's... Yeah, we hope to have a, a stoplight, a smart light put in there um, so students can safely exit the school that we have them go to, but until that doesn't exist, and um, so adding an additional um, however many cars per hour on that road while all these kids are also trying to pour out it, it, we just don't have a good spot for it, in, in my personal opinion. Yeah. But thank you. Thank you for your show. This has been Thank fun. you so much for calling in. Much appreciated. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. All right. We have a next caller. Um, his name is Paul. Hi, Paul. How are you? Hi, Nicole. How are you tonight? I'm good. <laughs> I'm doing well. I was just wondering... Um, I'm going to ask you a question, and then I'll hang up and wait for your answer. I was just wondering, has there any been any new developments in law enforcement to detecting if somebody is under the influence while they're driving a car? Oh. Uh, we don't hear much about this, and this is uh, one of the bigger concerns of mine. Yeah. Thanks. I'm going to hang up, and I'll wait for your answer. Thanks. Thank you. So, um... Yeah, that's kind of a tricky part because we've spent so many years looking at how drunk drivers act and whatnot, whether swaying, swaying and delaying a reaction, or when they get when they get pulled over. I'm gonna actually Google it, so I'm not lying to anybody. So we're gonna look up um, reactions. Oh, if I could spell right. Um, for driving under the influence, I apologize, of my All right, effects of cannabis compared to alcohol, perfect. So if we scroll down, oh goodness gracious, um, so, 
I mean, from when people smoke, they're going to have red eyes. They're going to be more sluggish from what I've seen at college and whatnot. Um, but it's, this isn't really a list. Um, but it's, I feel like it's similar to alcohol in a way where your time and perception is off and um, it, everything's delayed. So I feel law enforcement's going to have a bit of a, they need a bit of a leg up and a little bit more time um, to, you know, figure out what's going on and whatnot. So it's, it's going to take time. And I'm, I mean, I'm not going to lie. Like I said before, it's going to take time. It's going to take effort. And I don't know if Littleton Police is going to be ready to, um, ready to take on that new responsibility. I feel that they will be, but it's like, it's going to, it's going to take time. Like I said, um, so if anybody else would like to call in in our last four minutes or so, um, it's been a great night so far. I thank you so much for calling in. Um, and like I said before, it's, this is for civil discourse. It's for, it's a platform for people to voice their opinions because, I mean, first we have the First Amendment to be able to do that. And on top of that, we, um, it's just I feel that Littleton residents either don't have a platform to do it or they do it on a Facebook group and not everybody sees it on the Facebook group. So, I mean, this is a way for whether it's local government officials to see it or maybe national government officials, you never know, um, to see what citizens are thinking of. So I just thank you again for calling in. Um, and so, so um, my last words for tonight, um, thank you so much for watching Littleton Live. I want to thank our callers for being part of uh, the discussion tonight. Next week, July 17th, we will be discussing the idea that has been proposed about moving the start time for high school students to a later time in the morning. Do you think it's a good idea or not? Think about that and join us next week and give us your opinions on Littleton Live. I'm Nicole Biagioni, wishing you a good evening, Littleton.